program has won the prestigious Award of Excellence from the Film Advisory Board. story of Donnie Deinonychus. Our story begins in this little house in Montana. Professor Stevens lives here with Donnie the parrot and Pedro the chihuahua. They are very happy together. Donnie the parrot always sings and dances for Professor Stevens and Pedro. Let's go! Let's go! Professor Stevens has been experimenting with his computer and a video camera, tracing back the ancestors of pets and other animals. Donnie the parrot looks at the professor as he enters data about Pedro the Chihuahua. On the computer screen, Pedro's skeleton can be seen. Pedro the Chihuahua can't wait to find out what his ancestor looked like. Pedro poses in front of the camera next to the computer. Pedro's weird-looking prehistoric ancestor appears on the computer screen. Donnie sings and dances on Professor Stevens' shoulder. Now we'll see what your ancestor looked like, Donnie, says the professor. Donnie is happy, Pedro is happy, and so is Professor Stevens. Donnie's data is being created on the computer screen. This will take at least two hours, says Professor Stevens. So, Donnie, keep on singing and dancing for the camera while I take a nap. Pedro is already taking a nap. The computer continues creating the data. Donnie continues singing and dancing in front of the camera. Professor Stevens and Pedro sleep soundly. An hour passes. Meanwhile, outside, a thunderstorm is brewing. There is thunder and lightning everywhere. Donnie sees the lightning and stops singing and dancing. Donnie's ancestor is beginning to take shape on the computer screen, but the storm is causing interference. A bolt of lightning strikes a power line near the road. A surge of current travels down the wire and into the house. Uh-oh. Donnie is zapped. Donnie suddenly begins to change. He becomes Donnie Deinonychus, his prehistoric ancestor. A Deinonychus is a dinosaur which is considered to be the prehistoric ancestor of today's birds. Pedro wakes up and is startled by Donnie. <coughs> Professor Stevens wakes up and is surprised to see this strange creature in his house. Donnie is unsteady in his new body. Pedro sniffs and growls at this strange new creature. Donnie dances awkwardly. Professor Stevens realizes it's Donnie, or Donnie's ancestor, or Donnie and his ancestor, or Pedro is totally confused. <laughs> Professor Stevens hugs Donnie affectionately, and Donnie hugs him back. Pedro loves them both. Suddenly, Donnie begins remembering his past, not as a parrot, but as a dinosaur. 
Donnie is very confused. His parrot memory is going away. His dinosaur memory is coming back. He no longer recognizes the two strange creatures standing in front of him. He gets scared. Donnie suddenly jumps onto the desk and springs out through the open window, running away into the darkness. Professor Stevens panics. Where has Donnie gone? He goes to the window in time to see Donnie disappear into the night. <coughs> Professor Stevens immediately calls his friend Professor Dagger. He tells him all about Donnie and asks him for his help to find Donnie. Professor Dagger tells him to wait there for him. He is on his way to help him look for Donnie. Professor Dagger is not really Professor Stevens' friend. He is a bad man pretending to be his friend. He is very jealous of Professor Stevens. Professor Dagger is joined by his three goons, Sinister Sam, Gooey Louie, and Dennis Soar. They plan to capture Donnie and sell him to the circus. Professor Stevens has been at his window all night long, hoping Donnie would come back home. He remembers the good times. Professor Dagger and his three goons are already hot on Donnie's trail. Sinister Sam erases the footprint so Professor Stevens will not know which way to go. Professor Stevens stands on a hilltop searching for Donnie. Pedro is helping him look. Donnie has traveled far. What is he looking for? He's looking for his way back home. Do you think Professor Stevens and Pedro will ever find Donnie? Do you think Donnie will find his way back home? Do you think Professor Dagger and his three goons will find Donnie and sell him to the circus? See what happens in our next story of Donnie Deinonychus.
Deinonychus, which means terrible claw in Latin, was discovered by Dr. John H. Ostrom in 1964 in Montana. Dr. Ostrom is the paleontologist who discovered that his dinosaur Deinonychus is the closest ancestor to the first prehistoric bird, Archaeopteryx. Dr. Ostrom also made the discovery that dinosaurs may have been warm-blooded like today's birds. Because of Dr. Ostrom's discovery of Deinonychus, we have a new way of looking at all the dinosaurs. Donnie Deinonychus is the newest dinosaur for us to enjoy. He will teach us many things about the dinosaurs and tell us how to share, make friends, and most of all, love all animals and our parents. Ultimate Dinosaur Productions, Donnie, Pedro, and Professor Stevens want to thank Dr. Ostrom for sharing his important discoveries with us. In episode number two, Donnie comes upon a little school. Children are playing in the schoolyard. See what happens in Stormy, the long lost friend. This is Ruth Buzzy. Till next time. So far away from Professor Stevens' house, Donnie comes upon some children playing in the playground of their little school. Pedro eagerly leads Professor Stevens along the pathway where sinister Sam has already erased Donnie's footprints. Although Donnie's footprints are gone, Pedro can sniff where Donnie has been. Gooey Louie takes his turn erasing Donnie's footprints, while Professor Dagger, Sinister Sam, and Dennis Soar look at a map deciding which way to go. In the schoolyard, Donnie is immediately spotted by the children. They run and surround him with much curiosity. Sheila begins asking him where he's from, but Donnie is having a hard time talking. He tries to speak, but only funny tooting sounds come out. The children giggle at the funny sounds he's making. Donnie's tooting sounds are beginning to change and they're taking shape forming talking sounds. Donnie's parrot voice is slowly coming back, but his Deinonychus voice is much stronger. When he talks, he sounds like a parrot, but toots like a horn. Henry, the smartest boy in the whole school, asks Donnie a very scientific question. Are you a dinosaur? I thought dinosaurs were extinct. Donnie tries to answer, but all he can do is honk. Honk, honk, honk. Everyone begins laughing, and so does Donnie. Henry speaks up. From what I can see, you look very much like a Deinonychus. Uh, approximately five feet tall, right? Henry taps his pencil on his chin. A little boy named Corey curiously asks, Are you sure you're not a man in a suit? The other children look on in amazement. Sheila points to Donnie's toes and says, Look at his feet! Henry interrupts. He has three toes. He's a theropod. The children move in closer. They ask Donnie one question after another. Suddenly, one child screams and points, It's Billy! All of the children stop laughing and look in the direction where Billy is standing. They gasp in terror. Donnie is startled when he sees Billy and it causes him to yell, Wow! The tooting sound has disappeared. His voice is back. Billy stands alone in the playground. He is the biggest and meanest looking child in the school. 
Donnie is very surprised when he sees Billy. What is that? He asks. The children tell him, That's Billy the bully! Sheila hears Donnie talk and shouts out, You can talk! A talking dinosaur! <laughs> the children quickly turn back to Donnie. This time they have more questions than ever. They completely forget about Billy. Henry begins taking notes. Hmm, he speculates. A talking dinosaur. Totally unheard of in scientific journals. Henry asks him his name. My name is Donnie, he says. Donnie Deinonychus. Jeanette asks, where are you from? Donnie stops to think for a little while, and then he says, I used to live in the land of the Ceratopsians. The land of what? All the children ask at the same time. Ceratopsians, Donnie says. Of course, Ceratopsians, exclaims Henry. They were a species of Triceratops who existed during the late Jurassic and Cretaceous periods before the fall of the dinosaurs. The children yell out together, What? Who? Henry continues taking his notes while the rest of the children listen to what Donnie is about to say. Donnie begins telling them his story. A long, long time ago in the land of the Ceratopsians, my sister Connie, my freckle-faced brother Ronnie, and I were running a race. We were racing to a nearby pond in the land of the Ceratopsians. Connie was the fastest runner of us all. She always won every race. On this day, Connie began running the race without paying any attention to where she was going. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a small triceratops wandered out in front of her. Connie was running so fast she couldn't stop. She ran right into the young triceratops. The triceratops didn't even move, but Connie fell to the ground and was knocked out. My brother Ronnie, who was scared of all triceratops, turned and ran screaming all the way home. I stayed behind with Connie and the triceratops, who told me his name was Stormy. For just one moment, Connie woke up. She opened her eyes, saw Stormy, screamed and faded. Stormy and I did our best to wake her up again. Finally, Connie woke up. I told her, there's nothing to be scared of. Stormy is our friend. Back at home, Ronnie told our parents that Connie had been attacked by a Triceratops. Although this was not true, Ronnie was so frightened by Stormy's looks, he believed it was true. My whole family followed Ronnie into the land of the Ceratopsians to rescue us. By now, Connie and I had become friends with Stormy. Stormy explained how hard it was to make friends because everyone always ran away when they saw him. They were afraid of the way he looked, especially the three horns on his head. Stormy told us, I'm sorry I stepped out in front of you when you were running. I only wanted to make some friends. Connie and I told Stormy that we would like to be his friends. Stormy cried happy tears at finding his very first friends. All of a sudden, our whole family appeared. Ronnie was leading the pack. They rushed at Stormy, yelling at him to go away. Connie and I tried to stop our family from chasing Stormy away, but no one listened. Stormy was so scared, he ran off into the woods while my family made sure Connie and I safely made it home. I looked back for Stormy, but he was nowhere in sight. We could only hear his lonely sighs off in the distance. We never saw Stormy again, says Donnie, wiping a tear from his eye. You see, children, even though Stormy looked mean on the outside, he was beautiful on the inside and very lonely. At this, the children turned and looked back at Billy. We never really gave Billy a chance. Maybe he's just like Stormy, says Sheila. Donnie and the children walk over to Billy to make friends with him. Billy's mean frown changes to a happy, friendly face as the children begin to make friends with him. The school bell rings. The children have to go back to school. Donnie tells them he has to be going also, but he will be back. Not too far away in a wooded area, Professor Stevens and Pedro are pitching a tent. Gooey Louie has erased all the footprints. Professor Dagger and the three goons are lost. Donnie continues to look for his way back home. This is Richard Maul. Until next time.
stormy lives I want to see all the things that stormy sees to feel the wind to touch the breeze to feel the love that stormy felt long ago I want to play where stormy plays where stormy smile is the spirit of our love I hope someday Ceratopsians means horned faces. Ceratopsian dinosaurs resembled rhinoceroses and possibly ran like them. Ceratopsians had neck frills or shields and much longer and heavier tails than rhinoceroses. Some of the species of Ceratopsians include Triceratops, Chasmosaurus, and Centrosaurus, just to name a few. Ceratopsian bones were discovered in 1923 in the Gobi Desert which is in Central Asia. Is me. 